So thank you for being part of the Young Green Britain Challenge. This is a pilot year and we're working with around 15 schools across England. And the aim is to support and celebrate school-based youth-led climate action. This is a short video to introduce the challenge to those adults, teachers and potentially also mentors who will be supporting the students during the design sprint. So the first section is an introduction and there probably isn't anything much you're going to need to do during the, the introduction section. But throughout the day, we really ask for the teacher support in so far as you know your students, your school, your behaviour codes and things like that. So briefly, we just want to explain the broader journey that students are on. They have already explored local climate issues and selected issues that they care about. Today focuses on delving into those issues, those problems and designing solutions. After today, they'll develop the solutions and have the opportunity to pitch for seed funding, with five teams in the school receiving £100 each to put their ideas into action. Then one team in the school will have the opportunity to participate in the national challenge. So the first exercise is a design note for the day exercise. You probably won't need to play a role in this short exercise. So this exercise is a key one in terms of building problem solving skills. And we are expecting the adults in the room to need to play an active role in supporting teams as they get a bit stuck potentially at different points during this exercise. So the, there's a main exercise in this section that we'll be doing is one called the problem tree. And the problem tree is a way to sort of dissect a problem to really understand its root causes and the consequences. So each team will have a worksheet that looks like a tree and on the trunk of the tree, they will need to write the problem that they are focused on. Then the causes of the problem will become the roots and the consequences, so the things that we can often see, become the branches of the tree. We will run through a couple of examples with students. I'm just going to run through one with you now. quickly. So here is an example where a team might have fast fashion as being the issue that they care about. Here are a few different potential causes. Now they will need to kind of come up with the causes that they um, think are relevant. It could be around peer pressure, cheap clothes, people being unaware of the sort of climate impact. And then if we look at the branches, these are some of the things that some of the consequences, which might be pollution, it might be poor working conditions, it might be mountains of textile waste. Then this is where you are going to need to potentially help with the teams as they kind of develop their own problem tree. So the first thing we're going to ask them to do is to put the problem onto the trunk of their tree and then to try and come up with at least three or four different causes. From there, we're going to go and try and go a bit deeper into the causes and really sort of ask why those causes exist. And how might we be able to kind of break them down in more detail? So we'll go back to the fast fashion example and take one of those routes and delve deeper into it. So then we would ask you to support the team to start asking why, you know, why is there pressure there to always wear new clothes? What are some of those things? And, you know, keep asking why so that you come up with a number of different you know, causes that are a bit deeper and crucially are things that you can then start to think about, okay, well, what would you do about X, Y or Z? And then finally, as long as we've got time, we'll move on to the branches and ask them to start thinking about some of the consequences. And these are some of the visible things usually that you can see in relation to a problem and can be helpful in terms of explaining why it's important to actually address that problem. Once the tree has been sort of built, then we will ask students to select which of the routes they want to try and tackle and which do they think they could tackle. And this is important because it's about finding an area that they feel they can focus on rather than having kind of just fast fashion as, as a big and broad topic that feels kind of just impossible to think about how you even start coming up with solutions around that. 
there's a worksheet then that we will ask them to just complete a couple of sections of. The next piece is who will your solution be for? Here we're just asking the teams to think about who they're going to be designing for and asking them to essentially draw that personal group of people and some of their characteristics on a worksheet. And these are some of the things that you might want to prompt the teams to think about. So what age range? Is it teenagers? Is it kind of their parents' age range? Is it children? Is it grandparents? And then we move on to the brainstorming session. So there are quite a few sort of things we will do in advance and some brainstorming rules we will share. But the one thing that I think will be really important to prompt teams on as you sort of maybe go around the room and support them is to actually write a whole idea on each post-it note in a way that someone else can understand that idea. So what we have as an example here is some things that are not ideas. So what we might well find is that people write down things like um, TikTok, Instagram, an app, a website, speeches, they're communication channels, they don't actually explain an idea. So what we need to do is to actually encourage people to write down their idea. So a website that means you call someone and go to the place with lots of other people, that's an idea. A website in and of itself is not an idea. Then the next section is about sort of building and selecting ideas. So here we're going to be asking the teams to then read, you know, what all of their other peers have put down and actually group ideas together and potentially combine them into being bigger ideas. So again, they just might need a bit of sort of support and prompting on this. And then they need to pick an idea, which again is an area they might need some prompting on. Now, these are the sort of criteria that we would suggest they use, that the idea can make a difference, that it's a new idea, not new to the world, just something that isn't happening right now in their community, in their school, in their group, and that it's something that's achievable for them as, you know, as a group of young people. And we will share some ways they can do that during the session, but what we would suggest is that if they aren't sort of immediately in agreement on one thing, that each um, each student in the team picks one idea and shares why they care about that idea, and then they vote on that idea. And then we'll be asking the teams to complete a solution summary. And this is basically explaining what their idea is. So what is your solution? Who will use it? How will it work? Where will it take place? Who else do you need to involve? And what impact will it have? So again, they might need a bit of support on doing this and filling this in. They then will bring it to life. They'll each have a piece of flip chart paper. They can make a drawing. They can do a storyboard or a poster to kind of really be able to communicate what their idea is because then using the sort of prototype and the solution summary, they'll need to pitch what their idea is. And what we would like to do is to have small groups pitching to each other. So probably it will be around about four teams, but it will vary by school and depending on the logistics. So we may be asking you to facilitate a mini pitching session where you would have probably four teams one will be pitching, the other three will be listening, and the other three teams need to listen and be able to give feedback on what they liked about the idea and what parts could be improved. So if you're facilitating one of those groups, um, can you please sort of keep each presentation quite short? So we're asking for one to two minutes per team, and then sort of try and keep the engagement of the listeners by um, asking probably at random afterwards for ideas in terms of what they liked about the idea and what could be improved. And then we would like each team to kind of write down the feedback that they got onto their kind of feedback summary sheet. And that will bring us to the end of the day. So thank you very, very much for your support. 
So we would love to hear not just what the students think, but also what you think. So please do share your feedback. It's a pilot year and we really welcome all honest, constructive feedback. Thank you very much for your support.